Now, this is a newer feature that's been added 3.7.46. So make sure you updated to get this functionality. And if you have updated, you'll notice this new button over here. If we click it, it creates a new track. Keep clicking it to add multiple tracks. Now, before, we could just double click anywhere over here and it would create new tracks. And we still get that functionality, but we now have this button in addition to that. And the purpose was to make it more clear for beginners how to add new tracks just by hitting this plus button. Now, if you don't want that button, we could right click over here, go to Customize Toolbar, choose the Empty Track Control Panel Area Toolbar, and edit it in here. Just choose this, delete it, save it, and that button goes away. We can still create tracks by double clicking along with the usual way we add tracks. But before you delete it, you should consider some other functionality we could use with this new feature, as it is another toolbar in Reaper. Let's go back to customizing it and reset it over here, which brings back the insert track button. And because this behaves like any other toolbar in Reaper, we can add any action to it. So let's right click and insert an action. I'm going to type customize and choose to customize our toolbar right from here, which adds this action to make it easier to customize this toolbar or any toolbar if you want. So I'm going to choose it. I'm going to double click the icon and change it somewhere in here. I'm going to choose the heart, but of course you can choose any icon you prefer. Hit OK. Now it shows up like this. We can still add tracks from here or hit this button to customize that toolbar right from here. Let's try a few other actions. Right click, insert action. Let's type insert multiple and choose this action to insert multiple new tracks. Double click it, it adds it in here. Double click this to give it an icon. I'm gonna choose this one, hit okay. Now this shows up as well. Let's delete these two tracks, click this, and it opens up this dialog. Let's say we wanted to add four new guitar tracks, hit okay, and it created four guitar tracks named guitar one through four. So it's kind of helpful having this button right here to insert multiple tracks. And we could also do this for inserting virtual instrument tracks. Hit this button to customize it, right click, insert action, and we'll insert a virtual instrument on a new track. Double click this, let's give this a MIDI icon. Now our toolbar looks like this. We could hit this button and it opens up our effects dialog where we could add any VST instrument we want. I'm gonna choose the NUMA player, which I use for piano. Double click it and it opens up like this with a track audio and record ready to play back my MIDI. So if I play my USB MIDI keyboard, I could play my piano that easily. Let's save this as a track template as we could use that and I'll show you how a bit later. Right click, save tracks as track template. Let's name it piano and save it. And we'll come back to this in a bit. Let's add another button. Usually when I'm working with multiple tracks, I like to move some of these elements around and we could do that with a theme adjuster. But to get to the theme adjuster quicker, we could add a button to do that. Let's choose this again to customize it. Right click, type theme, and I'm gonna choose the default seven theme adjuster, which adds it here. I'll give it an icon, kind of like this one. Save it. And now if I wanna move my elements around, just hit this button and it opens up our theme adjuster. Go to the track controls, change the order right here of the elements on my track control panel or anything else you wanna do with the theme. 
but we could do it a lot quicker having the button over here to open up the theme adjuster. Another thing I like to do quite often is change the bars and beats and time in my arrange window. Let's say the song starts at bar three. I want to renumber this bar to be bar one and the time to be zero. And we could do that with two different actions, but I also created a custom action to do both at the same time. So I'm going to type in zero in the filter, and here's the custom action I created, which is basically to set the ruler at zero and the measures at bar one. It's going to do both of these at the same time. So if we create this custom action, add it to our toolbar, let's give this an icon. I'm going to choose this clock, save it. Now it shows up right here. So if I want to change bar three to be bar one and the time to be zero, just hit this button. My project changes to start right here. Or if I want it here, click here. Or back to the beginning, click here. Just makes it easier to start the song at different places, changing bar one and zero as the time. So if you remember, we saved a track template for our piano. We could also recall it directly from our toolbar. Although we do need the SWS extensions installed. Let's delete these and customize it again. Right click, insert action. And if you installed the SWS extensions, we can go to the filter and type in track template. If we scroll down, we have these actions right here to import tracks from our track template. And there's four to choose from. Let's just use two. Double click this. It adds it into our toolbar. Let's change the name of these to piano. And we'll use this one for some drums. As I created a track template earlier, just for some drums. Hit OK. Now our toolbar looks like this. But if we hit the piano button, it's going to ask us which track template we want to use which could be annoying if it did this each time, but it doesn't. We just have to do this once. So I'm gonna use the piano track template that we saved earlier. Notice it loads up. Let's clear it. And just hit this button and it opens up right away. Ready to record or play my piano. With one click or I save one for drums right here for my Steven Slate free drum VST instrument. Double click this, and this opens up right away. Ready to play my drums using separate outputs, some reverb, and effects like compression and EQ on each track. Completely mixed, ready to go. And again, because we already loaded it to slot two, we just click this button. And it opens up right away. Ready to go. So obviously, that's a very quick time saver. Now there's one more action I want to show you. Let's customize it again. In here, right click. Again, if you're using the SWS extensions, there's an action called scroll track view to home. Let's choose this. Let's give this an icon. I like to use the up arrow, save it. And that gives us this other button at the end of the toolbar. And where this is useful is if you have a lot of tracks. So let's create a whole bunch. Let's make 32 audio tracks. And here we have those tracks. We could scroll up and down. But when you're dealing with this many tracks, sometimes you get to the bottom. Where our new toolbar is, we want to get back to the top very quickly. We can just hit this up arrow and it takes us right to the top. So we could scroll down through our project. And if we get to the bottom, we can get to the top just by hitting this toolbar button and we're back to the top of our project. Just a nice time saver in addition to the other toolbar buttons we added. And of course, you could add any toolbar button you want that'll perform any action you want. 
It's completely customizable and definitely worth keeping around. So that's pretty much it. That's the Undertrack toolbar in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.